Hello and welcome to episode number 99 on the Online Trainers Podcast. Today's topic is how to get the competitor's advantage in 2017. Hello and welcome to the Online Trainers Podcast, where we go behind the scenes to uncover the latest tactics and strategies top trainers around the world are using to get more clients, dominate their marketplace, and get their clients amazing results. There is absolutely no fluff here. I'm your host, Lynn Trim. Now, I was just having a coaching call with one of my clients. She's in Romania. She's absolutely a brilliant soul and she knows strategy inside out. And we're having a look at her business and what we're going to do in 2017, more particularly why things weren't working out as such and such when, you know, we have a look at bottlenecks. So the first thing that I ever look at is three things, which are the core fundamentals, which are lead generation. Okay. Is she attracting enough leads? Sales. Is she converting those leads into clients? And then ultimately the fulfillment process. Are those clients getting results? Are they able to refer clients? Are they staying on? What's the lifetime cycle of these clients? So these are the three fundamentals that you should really look at inside of any business and inside of your own. But when we were in chat this morning, which prompted me to do this podcast episode, I really wanted to really dig down and see what bottleneck she had. And the biggest bottleneck was the sales and one of the things that we come across, and I've heard time and time again, is that the sales aren't converting. I'm not getting enough clients into my program. My clients can't afford it. And so a lot of the times when I hear my clients can't afford it, I've talked about this on podcast episodes before, but I hear this, I hear that I haven't demonstrated enough value inside of my program to my client. I haven't demonstrated the end results or denoted the outcome enough to them. And they haven't seen that. They haven't wanted the outcomes enough okay or i've become a commodity and they feel as though they can get the same thing elsewhere for cheaper so those are generally the four things that i would look at and i would troubleshoot those things by saying okay number one number one what does your clients really desire do your prospects really desire what is it that they really want okay and do they have confidence in your ability to get them there second question i have to ask is are you a commodity And a lot of the times a commodity is literally, you become a commodity when you become an item or a good that anybody can enter into the market and it's a race down to zero because anybody's delivering the exact same service at a cheaper price. When we talk about supply and demand, if there's three, four, five, six people, seven people supplying the same product, you then become a commodity. How you try not to become a commodity and how you try to own your own marketplace so that you can hold your own price is you begin to innovate. And through innovation, you have a look at what are the other things that your clients possibly have problems or issues with that you can problem solve because business is all the game, all the game of problem solving. The person who can solve the most problems, the most complex problems, the problems that are currently least, that are being least solved at the moment will have supply and demand skewed in their favor and therefore they can control the price. Okay. And one of the other things that we talked about was really the level of certainty. Now selling is all about certainty. It's all about certainty. It's all about future pacing the vision of the end result. It's all about certainty that you can get them there. And then ultimately you might have to use a little bit of scarcity to get them across the line. But the biggest thing is coming from a place of certainty and certainty comes from confidence. Okay. And with this particular client, she was absolutely phenomenal in everything else except certainty. And I asked her, what's the biggest thing that we have to do in 2017 for you to grow your business? And what is the thing that you are avoiding at this very moment in time? And after a long time, we came to this conclusion is that she needs to get better and better and better and better on video. And the truth is, I'm telling you this at this very moment in time, because as we move to, and as you probably noticed, Facebook is moving to a much more video platform. As we move to 2017, you have to get great on video in order for you to succeed, in order for you to build that engagement, in order for you to build that trust. And then it was a really good conversation that we had because she said, well, Lynn, like, you know, not everyone's good on video like you. And I'm like, I'm not good on video. And I sent her my first video and it completely sucked. But what I realized about this is that I said that this whole thing is a game. This whole thing is a game where there are hundreds and thousands of other personal trainers and what you see on social media and what you see on Facebook is the highlight reels of everybody's perfect life. Nobody puts this crap stuff out. How many selfies do we take before we decide on the best selfie to post on Instagram and have a look at yourself and then reflect that on everybody else out there? Okay, so what you get on social media is the complete highlights reel. So if you compare yourself to everybody's best, you will never win. 
because you always feel inadequate. And whilst I'm telling you this, I want you to understand that it's not about comparing yourself to yourself. Of course, you always want to improve. But when you start to understand that everybody else, don't compare yourself to the top 1% out there. Compare yourself to the other 99%. You'll start to realize and you'll start to give yourself a few quick wins. And there are a lot of trainers out there that are scared to put their face on video if you want to be successful. And if you can't put yourself out there on video, it's showing me one of two things. It's showing me one of many things. The first thing is that you have no confidence in yourself. And if you have no confidence in yourself and you're trying to sell health and fitness, it means that you are not congruent because health and fitness, in order to become healthier, in order to become fitter, as a byproduct of that, you become more confident. So if I'm trying to buy health and fitness from you because I want to become more confident, I want to look better to become more confident, I can't buy that from you if you're not on video to show me that you're confident yourself. It's incongruent, it doesn't make sense, right? And unless you're great and so confident at writing through email, but the problem is if you're writing through email and you're so confident through email, but then I speak to you on Skype and you're not that confident, there's a disconnect and I'm gonna go, well, this doesn't match up. So what video allows you to do, it allows you to really break through a lot of those language barriers, language patterns, and actually just go, okay, this is me, this is who I am, this is how confident I am. This is the life that I have. If you want to have what I have, come join my program because this is the bridge. And here are so many people that have gone through the bridge and here's where they are at the moment. So a lot of the times, most people are trying to sell body transformations, get shredded, get lean, get strong. People don't want that. They do, but they would skip the processes, which is why most people take supplement pills right? Because they don't care about the workouts. They don't care about the diet. They care about getting the end result as quickly and as effectively as possible. So what I'm trying to say in 2017 is that if you're trying to grow your business and you aren't on video and you are fearing it because you completely suck at it and I can appreciate, I can understand that and it terrifies you. Let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question. And it was a great question my client asked me because she's like, look, what if not everyone's as good as video on you? And I thought about this and it was great. And I had this little epiphany. And it was the fact that put a five-year-old on video. Put any five-year-old child, person, toddler on video and see how they naturally respond if they start to giggle, if they start to have fun, if they're shy, if they stumble with the right things to say or if they just flow, if they just know what to say. In fact, what you'll notice is that most children will actually shine. Most children will put on this facade. Most children, seven, eight-year-olds, would start to dance around and go, well, this is me, and they'll start to tell a story, right? Now, over time, what's happened, what's happened in our society is that we've had other people tell us how we should behave, how we should think, how we should act, and what business is like, how business should be run. And so over time, what's happened is we've built belief upon belief upon belief upon belief, and then we've, we're scared and we're fearful what other people will think about us because we're told that this is a certain way to live, that this is the certain way that you should operate your business and this is the certain way that you should be. Yet in reality, it's not serving you at all in this very moment in time because if you have a look at those people, you have to ask yourself, where are they now? And do I wanna live the life that they're living? Do I want the things that they have? And most generally, you'd actually say no. So they're living a mediocre life because they're so ingrained with all these beliefs. And why I say that is because every seven, eight year old who's naturally free, is naturally having fun, right? Who isn't suppressed by beliefs, by dictatorship, will be naturally okay on video and out there and won't be fearful and would have a lot of fun with it. Yet as we grow older, we start to get, we start to be told things. We start to have people tell us how we should behave, how we should act. And then we start to get fearful on how they'll judge us if we don't act that certain way. And that causes a fear. And the fear is if we go on camera, we don't say the right things and we aren't the right person, then we've done it wrong. And as humans, the last thing we want to do is we want to do anything wrong by anyone or we don't want to say the right things or we have a fear of judgment. And so at the end of the day, I, I really have to sit down and ask you, okay, is this belief helping you or is it suppressing you? I have to ask you that in 2017, let's say 2018, if you aren't on video building engagement, what's going to happen to your business? How else are you going to grow your business? Let me ask you a great question at this very moment in time. How else do you think you'll grow your business? But let me flip that on the contrary side. If you were amazing at video, 
if you're a freaking superstar, if you rocked it on video, if you had more confidence than ever, how would that change your business? How would it change your business? And I know for 99, 100% of you, you're gonna sit there and go, Lynn, man, I would make more sales, I'd get more, way more engagement, I'd have more followers. And I'm like, okay, what's stopping you? And the thing that's stopping you at this very moment in time is you've tried it, you've judged yourself too harshly, you've cared about what other people have thought, and you've folded it away. And then it's been one of those things where it's like, okay, fear and failure have hit you in the face and you've just turned around and gone, I'm, I'm gonna fail. I don't know, <laughs> I'm gonna fail. And so we know all the memes about failure and how you should fail a thousand times, but at the end of the day, it doesn't matter what we know, it's about what we do. And I'm telling you this right now is because if you're truly, truly, okay, if you truly care about giving a crap about growing your business in 2017, no tactics, no strategies, no coach, no mentor is gonna help you until you can pass this fear of failure and this fear of rejection and you need to change yourself. So the question I have to ask you today is who are you gonna be in 2017 to get the things that you want to get? Who are you gonna be? What does the person who generates $500,000 of revenue and sales or profit have to have? What attributes do they have to have? Think about this. You're attracting your $50,000 income, your $100,000 income by the actions that you take and who you are today. So who do you need to be to attract $500,000? And not so much attract, but I mean, what are the attributes? What are the habits? When you wake up in the morning, what do you have to do? Well, who are you to people? Are you a leader? Do you have to become more of a leader? Do you have to become more craftsman? Do you have to stop dabbling? So the question I have for you on this podcast episode today, and really I want you to do this because every single time I talk to somebody, and this is what I'm gonna to do today as well myself, is actually ask myself the question, who do I have to construct myself as in 2017 to be this person that attracts the things that I want? Rather than do goal setting and say I want these things, it's like, no, 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 hold on a second. If I change myself, I will get these things automatically because they're a consequence of me being this person. So draw yourself on a piece of paper, draw a stick man and just go, what are the attributes? How do I have to think? What's the level of personal development I have to have? What are the skills I need to acquire? Do I need to know marketing? Do I need to know sales? Okay, awesome. What are kind of the networks and the friendship groups I need to have? Okay, what about my confidence? What about my skill levels on video? Okay, awesome. What do I need to do every single day? What haven't I been consistent on doing? Is it videos? Is it emails? Is it podcasting? What do you need to know more of? Who do you need on your team? And so when you start to think about things this way and you stop thinking about the old crappy way to do goal setting where you say, I wanna do this in 2017 and then your mind's like, well, I don't know how to do that. And then you're like, well, I don't know how to do that. And then by the end, two weeks later, you don't know how to do that. It's because you haven't actually understood that you need to change as opposed to you going out there and hoping that it will come to you when you write down on a piece of paper. So the question I have for you today and the one task I want you to do is ask yourself this question, who do you need to construct yourself as in 2017? What skills, what attributes, what knowledge do you need to acquire? Who do you need to become? The you now is gonna be different to the you who generates half a million dollars in revenue, except you need to see that. You can't be yourself this time next year and expect yourself to have the things and the greatness that you want when you're essentially the same. Because if you are the same, you would have taken the same amount of action. You would have had the same amount of thoughts, right? And so therefore, that would lead to the same result. If you want a new result, you need to change you. And you need to change, most importantly, the habits. And most importantly, the foundations. And the foundations are the skills. What skills do you need to acquire? What habits do you need to take on? Who do you need to become? What's this person? What's this character you're constructing that in 2017 you'll become? Like we know this, our skin today, our whole body today wasn't the same body we were a year ago, completely new, right? From a cellular level. So I want you to, instead of letting your body rejuvenate itself and kind of let the ocean or the river take you where you're gonna go, I want you to actually dictate, okay, where do I need to go and what skills I need to take on? So if you need to make it a habit to write emails every day, then write emails every day and figure out how you can make that a habit. If you need to get good on video every single day, we'll figure out how can you get good on video every day? How can you get good on video? Stop overthinking and do the work. It's like, how do you get better at squats? Stop overthinking about doing the squats, go do the squats, and then actually re-correct. Obviously, the fast way, get someone to mentor you and coach you, okay, get the right person, but if you don't know how to do squats, 
and you're sitting there, you can read all the textbooks in the world, you can analyze things, but until you go in and do it, you can't fundamentally correct yourself and actually learn from the process because you learn by doing stuff. So that's the one thing I want you to do today. And of course, go send this to your accountability partner, go send this to your accountability buddy or a trainer or a coach out there who needs to hear this and actually go, holy, holy crap, in 2016, we didn't get anything done. Most people actually end up the same. And then they tell themselves that, oh my God, we're gonna do things differently next year. Actually, you wanna do things differently? Try this. Try this for a second, okay? So with that being said, I hope you have a fantastic new year. I'm gonna save episode 100 for post new year, all right, as I wind down, as I do a lot of thinking, as I do a lot of planning, because I really want 2017 to be outstanding, you know? And then, oh, there's one other question I wanna ask you today is, after you've constructed yourself, look back at 2016 on a scale of one to 100, 100 meaning you were on fire, and one meaning you were asleep. Where did you sit on that scale, honestly? like your full potential. For a lot of us, we're sitting at seven, eight, nine, 10. Some of us are sitting at 12. Very few of us are sitting at 20, 30. So the question is, how can we move that scale up? Okay, have a fantastic new year, keep safe. And of course, if you need me, you know where to find me. All right, if you enjoyed this podcast, please leave me a five-star review on iTunes and feel free to leave a review in that way. I can respond and I can take that on board in developing content to serve you. Now, if you're not a part of the Online Trainers Club on Facebook, please do yourself a favor and be a part of the conversation. That's where I add daily tips, tricks, and strategies on how you can build out funnels, how you can get more clients, and ultimately become a better online coach. Thank you for listening.